As you may know by now, I have a tendency to bookmark basically every single beautiful thing I come across on the internet. So I wanted to share a little peek into some of the things I've been saving that have caught my eye, whether I really appreciate them from a design perspective, maybe they're not quite reflective of my own personal style or they sort of fit into the idea of fantasy self, or alternatively, things that fit into the concept of items that I'm planning to add to my wardrobe throughout the year. Now, I'm gonna scooch over a little bit so that I can put on the screen here all of the items that I'm talking about in today's video. And you will have to mind the lighting because it is incredibly cloudy and overcast. So, first item is actually something that I'm looking to get as a replacement for a pair of boots that I loved, but unfortunately are no longer wearable. My beloved port and pair boots, our cat destroyed them, they fell victim to her. And trust me when I say you really probably don't want to know the details. So I've been on the hunt for a replacement. And as we slowly head towards autumn here in Australia, I figured now is a good time to start looking for something that can fill that gap. Unfortunately, I missed the boat to replace them like for like. So, Cezanne have these boots called the Lena Low Ankle Boot, I believe, and these are the ones that I'm looking to buy. I really like the overall style of them. They actually have a much chunkier leg sole, which I appreciate. It adds a lot of visual weight to an outfit and is very grounding. And these are a full leather with the elasticated gussets on the side. So I'm assuming they're going to be fairly easy to put on. They don't look like they're going to fit quite as snugly around the ankle as the port and pair ones did. However, I think that these are very similar in terms of what they're going to add to an outfit for me. And I've had a really good experience with Cezanne boots and also their leather loafers, which are beautiful. And actually, just while we're on the topic of Cezanne, while I was browsing, they have a new bag style, which to me looks like such an incredible dupe for the Celine box bag, but a little bit modernized for perhaps what our eye is resting on right now. It's called the Milo or Milo leather bag. So I thought I'd just throw that one in here. If you were looking for something that had structure and that is going to be a really smart looking shoulder bag that was beautiful also can be worn you know longer crossbody cross your frame all right let's move on to the next item it's kind of more of a category from dish and it's their wide leg trousers as you may know this is a really huge trend at the moment it is a silhouette that seems to be absolutely everywhere and it can be really hard to find that right balance of quality and price i think they nail it they have a few different variations so they have an elasticated waistband version and then they also do more of a suiting fabric version with a fixed waistband and also a cotton or linen blend version I believe as well. I have a pair from Dish which are really nice in a sort of off-white bone color that I bought last year that I really love and I wear those quite a bit. They're also fully lined too which kind of adds to the value that I'm perceiving that I'm getting from my purchase um, but I just don't think that you can go wrong <laughs> and uh, it's a brand that I've definitely found myself leaning on quite a lot recently so I wanted to throw those in the mix in case you've been on the hunt for something but just hadn't found a pair that fit within your budget as they often tend to do sales or you might be able to snap some up during one of their uh, end of season sales. All right, moving on to Cos, which is definitely one of my favorite retailers to look at for more voluminous, but interesting shapes and silhouettes. And actually, if you're a big fan of Tibby, but find that Tibby's a little bit out of your price range, or can't seek out what you're looking for on the pre-loved market. I think Cos and also the sister brand Arquette tend to have very similar styles that draw a lot of inspiration from the brand's designs. So the shirt that I saw, it is a voluminous cotton shirt. And the one I was looking at is in the blue and white stripe, but it also comes in a white. As you can see, I'm, I'm having a real moment with the color blue and I'm loving this injection of uh, different tones into my wardrobe of late. Now there's a few things to like about this top from my perspective. The first being that it's a collarless design. I have said this before, but sometimes I find when there is too much structure around my neckline, it feels a little bit too busy, like there's too much going on. So I quite often look for shirts that have a lack of a collar. I also look like it's got quite a flat uh, fit in the front. Um, then the thing that I was really drawn to that especially captured my eye and my heart was the sleeve detail at the cuff. It has this voluminous blousey effect and I really like that. I know that these sort of more oversized sleeves can feel or read inconvenient, but 
I think it's a really great and interesting way to add shape and silhouette into your outfits, especially if you are opting for more minimal pared back basics for your day to day. Okay, next we have this beautiful kind of caramel rich brown blazer from Ghani. I don't feel like I've necessarily had the best luck with Ghani pieces as of late. Um, I've found that maybe the styles, I love them in theory, but they don't necessarily always work for me, or I have a pair of shorts, I'm going to talk about that later, that haven't worn the way I'd expected. But this blazer, it's just a thing of beauty. I really like the boxy fit and the fact that it has a dart down the center of the back or a pleat that gives it a really sort of 60s swing style shape that you wouldn't expect when you're looking at it front on. And it's those sort of unexpected details that I tend to look out for these days. When I'm adding anything new to my closet, I really like the big buttons. It just feels mod in a way. And I'm finding myself drawn to these slightly more structured jackets of late. Maybe this is a trend for the year ahead, but it's just something that I am perceiving as really fresh and new and exciting. It's made of a recycled polyester blend. So for me, this would be more of an autumn winter piece. It does actually have a pair of trousers that match too. But yeah, that one's sort of on my wish list at the moment. And I did find an alternative from a new brand discovery for me on the W Concept website. The brand is called Nosha and I feel like the fit of their caramel blazer is a little bit more traditional, but it still has that kind of boxy fit and it crosses over the body. Really, really beautiful. Um, and that would maybe be a more classic alternative to go for but I think when you've got so many classic items in your closet sometimes you want to inject a little bit more playfulness and something that's a bit fun off the beaten track if you know what I mean okay another pair of shoes I swear most of the things that are my bookmarks tend to be shoes and it's funny because I tend to find myself wearing the same ones on rotation these ones are another pair that I think I'm probably going to buy because they're on sale and they have another 20% off if you're in Australia or an additional 30% off if you're based in the US, I think, or maybe in Europe as well. They're the Row Margaret Heeled Loafers. Now, this is a pretty expensive pair of shoes, but one thing that I've really realized and recognized about my personal style is that as much as I love a flat loafer, I'm more likely to wear a shoe if it has a slightly low heel to it. The flat boots I mentioned before are definitely the exception, but when it comes to kind of the colder months, I do appreciate and like that little bit of height. And it's because I do have that shorter inseam and I'm trying to create visual length. And sometimes that is really well achieved with actual height. So I think that's one of the reasons why I was drawn to them. I haven't had a heeled loafer in a really long time. I think the last pair I had, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the last pair I had were the Stuart Weitzman tasseled loafers that I bought the first year that I was living here in Sydney because I remember I was working in David Jones head office and I used my staff discount to buy them. They were a beautiful, really comfortable shoe uh, and I've never really filled that gap after they kind of seen their day, done their dash. Uh, so I thought these might be a good option. I'm going to give it another 24 hours. So by the time this video goes up, I may have already pulled the trigger on this particular purchase, but I just want to give myself that time to make sure that it is the right one for me. Shoes are always one that I think you kind of need to try on in your house with your clothing to make sure it's going to work. So fingers crossed if I do go for them that they end up being a keeper. Okay, I mentioned earlier that I had a bit of bad luck with Ghani and I have some high-waisted paper bag shorts from Ghani. Many of you may be familiar with. I've been wearing them quite a lot recently over the summer because they are machine washable. Unfortunately, what I've noticed is that the crepe fabric has really started to get a lot of pulls on it, especially at the back, and it's not aging well. And I do try and take really good care of my clothing, so it's a bit disappointing to see, and I can only surmise that it is down to the fabric that has been used. My other kind of issue with them is that I think the proportions are slightly off for me. They're really high-waisted, which I love, but with the paper bag effect, it kind of draws the waist up even further, and then they're a really long length. The length is easy to fix. I can get those tailored. If it weren't for the quality issue, I think I'd be more enticed to do that. So I'm kind of looking for something that would fill that gap in my closet or at least replace those in my closet that is going to be a little bit more suitable for my lifestyle, maybe in a more hard wearing fabric like a cotton or a linen. 
I found a pair from Server Label which look like they'll do the trick. These have a fixed waistband so I can put my own belt and kind of add that extra bit of personality on my own terms. And I really like the length of them as well. So I think they may be a winner. Uh, I'm just gonna wait and see if they do a little bit of a sale so that I can snap them up at a slightly discounted price. Okay, this is a bit of a wardrobe appreciation moment, but also I really, really love the print of these trousers. My Tibby Stella pants. I get asked about them every single time I wear them and I'm definitely not opposed to potentially adding them in a different color or in a different fabrication to my closet. And I just saw for the season ahead that the brand has launched this beautiful check print and they read really classic to me, but they're kind of different to anything that I already own in my closet. A really, really expensive wardrobe edition, but I did just want to give them a shout out in case you really like that particular trouser you might have seen. Because they have the really long rise and because I have them in a US 2 as opposed to a 0, which I think is probably more suited to me and where I like to wear my clothes, I can do this trick where I place the hook on the first belt loop to have a wrap effect. And I feel like that's a really chic way to wear them and wear them a little bit higher up on the waist. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. And um, I have found a couple of retailers that sell them outside of Tibby, which I'm gonna link below just because I find the returns process a little bit easier if you live outside of the US. So thought I would mention that, but a beautiful trouser and I mean, I absolutely adore mine. I always feel really, really good when I'm wearing them. Okay, piece of jewelry. I'm really feeling these kind of more chunky necklaces at the moment. I've been wearing such fine necklaces for a really long time and I love what a dainty necklace adds to an outfit, but sometimes you kind of want your accessories to be the hero. And I really like this chunky chain link necklace from a brand called Kit, or is it Kitty? Uh, it's an Australian or Melbourne based brand and it is uh, gold plated. I really love the ball and link aspect of it. I think it looks really visually interesting. I did find a version that is solid gold on net a for a cool 36,000 Australian dollars if you're in the market for something like that. Definitely not on my budget, that's for sure. Um, which looks very similar and I'm just going to pop that one on the screen in case you want to see but the kit version I think is gorgeous and it's actually been sitting on my wishlist at the Iconic for well, probably the better part of 12 to 18 months so I think this year is finally the year that I decide to add it to my wardrobe. Okay two more items to talk about, first one being from St. Agony. I did want to share a few more things or a few more favourites from Australian brands. Now. I went to the St. Agni pop-up late last year and this was a dress I wanted to try on but the sales assistant forgot to bring it to me in the change room. Had my daughter with me, it was just it was just going to be too challenging to try and figure it out at that point in time so I sort of just let it lie. But I love this dress, I love the check print, I really adore the colours that they've chosen, that they've selected for it and I think that the backless detail is really sexy in more of that subtle 90s kind of a way, not in a uh, overt look at me, look at the fact that I'm revealing so much skin because the front is actually quite covered up and the skirt is pretty modest as well, the length of it. So that's one that I've been looking at. I mean, now that we're sort of heading to the end of summer and we're gonna sort of start drifting towards autumn, I'm sort of thinking about whether or not this is the type of item that I would be utilizing in more of an autumnal way. I'd want it to have a multi-seasonal presence in my closet. The final item I wanted to mention is actually from Oriton and this is a 100% silk trench style dress. So it has all of these beautiful buttons which in the white really pop against the silk. The silk looks like it's an organza so it's got a little bit of a structure to it. There's a bit of a sheen to the fabric which is beautiful and it can be worn either with the belt at the waist to define and add shape or it can be worn loose. And actually I think it would look really nice if it was worn open as a layering piece, more so as a jacket. And it reminds me a lot of something that I've seen from Tibby. I kind of like to think about how particular pieces can be multifunctional, multi-use, and again, just transcend more than one or two seasons in our closet. And this sort of looks like the type that could. I also 
think the color is absolutely beautiful. It's really brilliant and I like that element of shine. That's really something that I have injected a lot into my wardrobe of late. So yeah, those are kind of the items that are sitting on my wish list right now that I'm kind of thinking at or just think look really beautiful for the season ahead. Have you made any really stellar purchases that you are absolutely loving? Let me know and thank you so, so much for spending some of your day with me. If you're new here and you want to subscribe, I would absolutely love to have you back and I will see you next week with a brand new video. See you very soon. Bye.